Begezela. Hi, welcome to Begezela, a show that aims to eradicate gender-based violence, a show that aims to empower women, and most importantly, a show that aims to intensify the legality of a man laying a hand on a woman. What it looks like we have pretty much to do. Let's go. I will never forget the day I found out that my dad was secretly abusing my mom. Sure, I was 17 years old and I remember we were watching TV and um, as we were watching TV I heard screams and sounds in the bedroom. It sounded like my mom was crying for her life and as soon as we heard the sounds my sister you know just tried quieting quieting us down and instead she increased the volume i said why are you increasing the volume what's going on and as soon as that happened i confidently stood up and i walked to the bedroom and you have to understand that our father was really strict he was a traditional zulu man and if you understand zulu men they are strict by nature and so i stood up and this level of bravery just overcame me and i walked to the bedroom and i banged on the door i knocked on the door ga, ga, ga. and i've never seen my dad so angry in my entire life and he opened the door he was angry he was wouldn't and um, he said to me for the very first time it went a foot tech. I was shocked. Wow, who is this monster? Who is this man who is so respected in the community? A man who is loved and adored by many people. A man that we also love too so much. And to see him so angry, taking out all his power, all his strength on a powerless, vulnerable woman. And my mom was standing in the background and she was crying and I refused to let him hit her in our presence. This was the very first time I was finding out that he had been hitting her. And so when I did, I did not want to leave because he kept saying, go away, go away. I said, no, um shayelani. And then uh, my mom walked out of the room and she came and she sat in the living room. And I'm just trying to paint a picture of what happened when I was 17 years old, when I found out for the first time that my dad was hitting my mom. It's happening in so many households where this has become normal. Why is GBV so unacceptably acceptable? And my next question is, why aren't you doing anything about it i'm sure when i talk about gender-based violence you can think of a couple you can think of a family that you know but what have you done about it because we have accepted it it's something that you know when you immediately think oh that's none of my business i shouldn't intervene well maybe you should because laying a hand on a woman is assault and now what the show on Begazela. I would like us, I would like the government, I would like the state, I would like the highest authority to intensify the legality of a man laying a hand on a woman and to see maybe if the horrendous act will continue. So many times we are hearing of women slaughtered and brutally killed like animals found lying in parks the following day. It's something that has become so normal, yet it's abnormal. And we need to intensify the legality of this action so that men will know that it is absolutely unacceptable to lay your hand on a woman. And that's exactly what this show is about. Each week, we are unpacking gender-based violence, looking at different factors that contribute to this act and possibly trying to figure out why exactly it's happening. And this week, we are addressing appearance. How important is appearance in a relationship? And what happens when a person's appearance starts to change and so still going back to the topic of my family i remember my mom um before she got married she was absolutely beautiful gorgeous and as i started looking at pictures of her in her latter days her glory her her, her glow started to shine less and less and what happened my dad ended up killing her and if you are part of the mega zela generation well i've got news for you you will die and i really really do condemn women who advise others to go back to their abusive 
partners why just for uklala nengane staying with the kids oh megazela that's exactly what this show is about we are saying away with megazela if you megazela was off I actually have a problem with saying if you beg a you will die because that's precisely the mindset we're trying to fix. Why should you die? Why should men kill women? Why do men hurt women? We'll be exploring this notion in each episode. In the meantime, women shouldn't stay in toxic relationships. Save your soul. Save your children. Joining us on today's episode is Swaziland-based couple Bake and Nogwanda Dlamini. Pastor Bake is a pastor, marriage therapist, author, and motivational speaker. And Miss Nogwanda is a social worker by profession and a marriage advocate. And they are here to help us understand more about appearance and what happens when a man abuses a woman. Appearance is important. Uh, because it's about setting a standard of excellence. And the fact that you are married doesn't mean that you stop living. You still need to look good. So it's, 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 it's important. It speaks about uh, how you value yourself as an individual and as a couple. So it's important that even when we're married, we continue to show self-worth. Appearance, uh, hey, it's very important, hey, because it appearance appearance speaks before you can say anything um it tells people how you are feeling um it 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 tells people um you know uh, how you are like even with the person that you're with the body the body language i i would assume that is also appearance the body language also speaks for itself so the way I interact with him already says something mm -hmm. to the next person, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so appearance is that important. It's big. Um, um, the way I look says something about him because we're talking about relationships, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The way mm -hmm. he looks says something about me because, you know, even when he's out there in public with his shirt I mean, wrinkled, People are, are not gonna say, "Oh, what's wrong? Hey, why didn't he?" And they're gonna say, "Where is the why?" Mm. What happens when when your partner starts to change? Who is accountable for the change? Who is at fault if your partner starts losing their glow? When when it comes to the partner's um, deterioration, when it comes to image, uh, the mm. person that's responsible. At first, is the person that has a decline when it comes to their appearance. They are responsible. We are responsible for taking care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, in spite of how life treats us, in spite of how a person, the other person treats us, we are responsible for ourselves. But, mm -hmm. but yes, a partner could be responsible for the other partner. Uh, number one, we need to promote each other. We need to encourage each other to shine, to glow. A partner could be responsible for another partner's loss of, you know, beauty or glow because um, there could be instances of abuse at times uh, where a partner is discouraged from growing or shining, where a partner has their self-esteem destroyed. So it's, it, it, it could be two ways. It could be the individual is responsible for themselves. And it can be, if we honest at times, we can neglect ourselves uh, when we are in a relationship. So that could be, that individual has, a, has an issue they need to work on themselves. Yeah, I also wanted to say that it's actually everybody's responsibility mm. in, in the partnership. Um, could be the husband, could be the wife. Um, the way somebody else, you know, looks, mm. it, you, it needs to, it needs to bother you. If they're not looking good, it needs to bother you. 
because at the end of the day, it also comes back to you. It's extending in, oh, that's her wife, that's his wife, or that's his girlfriend, and that's mm. her husband. And they're looking a certain way. Yeah. And if you don't like the way they're looking, um, then it, it's best that you communicate, you know, so that you are on the same page and you get to understand why that person is actually looking that way or appearing that way. Okay. Yeah. So now let's, yeah. let's look at a relationship or a marriage where now the communication is broken and trust is broken, where it's not easy to have a conversation with your partner and address that, okay, you're not looking like how I saw you. Maybe let's put it in a context where um, there's an abusive relationship. The abuser mm -hmm. has insecurities and he does not want his partner to look beautiful. And so mm -hmm. he tries to put her down so that she doesn't have a sense of awareness. So what happens in a relationship like that, where now the partner, um, because you are responsible for how you look, but if you are in a toxic relationship, you end up almost, you know, you get brainwashed in the process and you stop paying attention because your partner is telling you that, hey, you're not good enough. Hey, you this, hey, you that. So you stop spending time in front of the mirror. So now in that context where it is an abusive relationship, be it physical, be it mental, be it emotional. What happens then when a partner is trapped and their appearance is changing and they really don't know what to do? Well, yo, that person is slowly, slowly dying because mm. you actually die before somebody or you kill yourself just mm. by the deterioration that is going on on your image um you're probably not taking care of yourself anymore even when it comes to health um then you basically going down and you now but at the same time i would say it is um it is a natural way of a, a cry for help I would think mm. because um, mm. like I said that you know even our bodies they, they speak before we can say anything so in a way it's like a, 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 a just a way for your body to cry out for help so your family members are now going to see that there's a change our sister mm. doesn't necessarily look the way that she used to you know, mm. now it mm. will take mm. people that know you, it will take people that care for you, yeah, that, that will now answer to that call and, okay. and start providing help. Otherwise, on your own, like you were saying, you probably been brainwashed, mm. you, you know, so you're probably not going to be able to do anything for yourself at that point. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so it's an outs in that situation. It's an outside community of people who can help you. And so now I have I have a problem with, with the community specifically because when we talk about gender based violence, I'm sure you can at least think of one family or one couple where the husband is abusing the wife or something like that is happening. Immediately when we talk about the subject, because it's so common, but nobody talks about it. Nobody wants to intervene because yeah. you don't want to interfere in a marriage. Everybody knows it. And it's a silent killer. So you our sister, our mother, our aunt is no longer looking like how she looked 20 years ago. They are away. These are the people that you are relying on, even if you don't have the strength to say to them, can you please help me? These are the people who can actually help you. Yeah. So now, what happens when you are surrounded in the community? Because this is exactly what happens. Neighbors know when there's abuse happening in a, in, a, in a family. Relatives know. But everybody's just like, hey, 
I'm not going to intervene and again it then is again Oban because nobody wants to intervene. Let's let's go back to the person. I always like going back to the person. We we can't depend on people. The bug stops with us. Uh, I think we need to normalize or encourage um, um, not tolerating abuse. Number one, we need to create an awareness when it comes to our society on abuse. People need to be aware um, about the signs of abuse, that abuse is also wrong. Um, 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 not tolerate abuse. If you're going through it and someone is abusing you emotionally, they are wearing you down, they are tearing you apart, they are taking, they are removing your self-esteem from you, and they're scraping off the self-esteem that you have. You need to be a conscious being. We need to normalize walking away, number one. Let's stop this thing of saying, you know, love is, so, is synonymous to pain. Love is not painful. Yeah. The moment you yeah. feel pain in a relationship, it's not, it's, 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 not, it's not your portion. You have a right yeah. to live, even if it's two, two weeks into a relationship. Let's normalize walking away. Madness is madness. When you can't be in a situation where someone is scraping off your self-esteem gradually, and you need to take care of yourself. Let's let, let's let's let, 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 let's let's promote the message of self-love. Mm -hmm. That in a relationship, it begins with yourself. You love yourself. Be with someone that loves you. Take care of yourself. Don't don't let go of yourself. As Nagagel Zitande, but if it seems like now. What's taking off the beauty that you have from you is an outside force. It's someone that's abusing you. You deserve to maintain your beauty. And the only way to maintain your beauty is to leave that relationship. It begins with yourself. Wow. That's well said. Um, before, you, <laughs> before you leave us, um, can I just get one comment from each? And then, Fondisi, on your end, can you please tell me... Um, why men abuse women? And then Ma, mm. on your side, can you please tell me why women tolerate abuse? Fundisi, I'll start with you. Why men abuse women is because, I'll be honest, as men, we still view women as our properties, as our projects. It's enshrined in our culture. And uh, you talk about toxic masculinity or patriarchy, it's in our culture. Uh, we need to go back to our culture. Culture is good, but culture is not perfect. Where culture has got good elements, let's embrace those good elements. But where there are bad elements, let's remove those bad elements. Uh, it's interesting that even the same culture protects women, we'll be honest. When you look at true culture, um, it protects women. It's only that we are now having culture that is watered down or that is misused. Uh, so not to delve much into culture on how it protects women, uh, the, the, on where it protects women. Let me just go back to your question so that I don't digress. We have a problem of perceiving women as our properties. That's why when a woman says she wants to live a relationship, we want to kill that woman and kill ourselves. I won't lie, it's, it's a childish tendency because we are responsible for our own lives. If someone no longer loves you, as a civilized being, you need to be able to say, okay, let it be. And loving someone doesn't mean they have to stay with me. If they no longer want to be with me, loving them means also letting them go to, to live the life that they want. So we need to speak to our culture. The government, where can the government help? We need to take this education uh, the gentleman's code, we need to take it to our schools, primary school, preschool. We need to groom, groom the boy child. We need to take it to workplaces, speak to men. Because I'm just cartel about they don't want to learn. Uh, we always talk about men's conference, men's conference. There's no men's conference. It's false advertised. If you call it men's conference, they are not coming. I'm a counselor, I'm a therapist, they don't want to come for counselling. You'll only find yes. them at uh, FNB Stadium, uh, yes. Moses Mabida, watching soccer, or whether in bars. And uh, that's the challenge that we have. We don't want to learn this, man. We don't want to... 
uh, we, we, we see seeking help or getting help as a sign of weakness. We don't want to be taught. So we need to go back. We need to go back to the roots and help uh, the men. Unfortunately, the corruption goes back. Uh, it goes up to our leaders. Why it can't be confronted is because our leaders are corrupt themselves. They are womenizers, I'm sorry to say. They are womenizers. Yeah. They are abusers themselves. So when you say, let's correct a certain man in society, no one is ready to correct the same man because all of our hands are dirty. Some of the people that abuse women are pastors, so they'll call it easy business, yes. okay, we hide things, and we are going nowhere. Meaning, I think helping men, I would be wasting time right now. I'm sorry to be honest, I walk on the wrong side of the bed. I would say the only people we can help right now are our sisters to say madness is madness. Oh. Don't find yourself in a place of madness. Men, so you waste my own and at 20 hundred. I don't see any change. We, we're refusing to accept that we are wrong. Quickly, we go to defenses. No, we abuse women. We abuse women because they are talkative. They abuse us. No, if a woman abuses you, you have a right to leave. So we can't condone and tolerate abuse. Right now, we are going nowhere with the dialogue when it, uh, when it comes to the dialogue of abuse because we've gotten to a defense mode. You go to social media, men are defending. Yeah, the reason why she was killed is because she was talkative. And no one talks about women like Uyenen that was killed by the post office guy, whom had she abused emotionally. Uh, what had she done to that to that man? We, we rape, we do whatever we want, and we have a problem. Up until we realize we have a problem, nothing will happen. But government has got to step in, churches have got to step in, chiefs have got to step in. If that doesn't happen, we're going nowhere. It also goes back to what he was talking about. We are also groomed. Mm -hmm. As girls, we are groomed that we we take hardship. Hardship is, 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 is meant for a woman, mm -hmm. according to Yo. our culture. Hardship is meant for a woman, and that is where Bubegetela comes from. We're supposed to yes. you know, endure. Yeah. We're supposed to endure. If it's hard, we are taught that if it's hard, so it's the, going the right the nice, way. The nice ideas. Oh, right. <laughs> if, if, it, if, if it's hard, it's going the right way. Yeah. And also, modeling. Yeah. we've seen our mothers, we've seen our grandmothers staying under like terrible circumstances. And you wonder why, you know, why would, why, why does she need to even die, you know, because yeah. of, of, of somebody that had said they love them at some point. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, so when you when when you think about leaving and, 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 and escaping, you you are also thinking, okay, you're going to be called names. Yes. You're going back home, you're going to your parental home. So you're, you're going to be you're going to be called names. You're a failure. You couldn't handle the heat. You're going to be told that. You you couldn't handle yeah. the heat and you're back home to mm. to to, to take up space that doesn't belong to you anymore. If in our homes, when you get married, our your plate is broken. I see. I see. That's what yes, that's what happens with some yes. cultures. Your plate is broken when you're getting married. Mm. What are they telling you? The space no longer you there's no space for you here anymore. So tell mm. me how that woman is gonna feel. The, the one time that she feels like, you know what, I want to leave. Where are you going to go to start afresh? Because starting afresh is something else, you know? Where are you going to yeah. go? Better yeah. if you had your home that you're going to be welcomed in and you start afresh from home. But now they told mm -hmm. you, and not besides when telling you, they broke your plate. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so you don't belong there yeah. anymore. So that's what yeah. makes women stay. A final one, sure. a final one, a final one that makes women stay, painful one, is that women, some women are the greatest proponents of patriarchy. Yeah. Some women will kill you, will murder you to protect patriarchy. Some women will murder you to protect abuse. Um, if a woman speaks again.
against abuse or get a man locked up in prison, some women would kill that woman for that. They would protect that monster. That's the reality that we have in our communities. We're going nowhere. Thank you so much to our guests, Pastors Bake and Nogwanda Jamini. Till next week, Thursday, we'll see you again on Begezela City. Hi, Lo Begezela.